just so different in person. Another margarita. Cut. Bro. <laughs> I did it, so. You were committed to the cause. That's Word. absurd, bro. Welcome back. Today, I want to take you guys behind the scenes of a short film I got to shoot, directed by my good friend, Brett Blackwell. This is kind of a short romantic comedy about the ups and downs of what it's like as a woman dating in LA. This is the first time shooting a scripted narrative project with actors for both of us. So I want to bring you guys along to break down my approach to the cinematography as the DP, share some of the mistakes we made, and overall, what I learned shooting my first short film. It's day one. Early morning call times uh, hit pretty hard when you're up till two in the morning, finalizing the schedule and working on the shot list with the team. We started shooting our first scene of the day with our lead actress, Talia, and her supporting actor, Jacob, at Allegra's California Cafe here in Culver City. The owner was kindly able to open up the whole back end of her restaurant for us to shoot in for a few hours. I gotta say, it's kind of nerve wracking, like finally getting everyone together on set to start shooting this film that's been in the works for the last few weeks. We have a cast and crew of nearly 20 people. There's so many amazing people and creative minds coming together to make this thing happen. Ooh, bro, what is this, a movie? Damn. This looks crazy. It's like T18. As you guys probably have noticed, we're shooting this film on the Sony ZV-E1. Small Rig, our sponsor, provided basically all of the rigging for us. The new ZV-E1 cage works amazingly to take this basically pocketable creator camera and turn it into a full-on cinema like production camera. I wanted to use this platform to just show how capable a small mirrorless camera can be and really demonstrate the importance of all of the other components that make up um, a right, film. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, let me know when you're set. I'm set, this feels good. Cool. All right, camera speeds. This patio location was really interesting. We wanted a pretty bright and inviting feel for this brunch date scene. So we ended up throwing up the 720B uh, with a big dome softbox, then triple broke through some four x four diffusion frames as a super soft and wrapping far side key. Then with a bunch of negative fill to create some nice contrast and shape on the actor's faces. And then the 300B as a backlight firing into a four by eight ultra bounce, just sort of flagged off. Everything else looks good though. Okay. Killing it, guys. And action. My ex came to the door and I had to shove him in the closet. Oh, don't, yo, don't embarrass That's me in front of, much. don't embarrass me in front of company. Oh, I forgot I'm lobbed up. We're keeping this neg. Can you help me slide through here? Yeah. Yeah, that should, yeah, that should be fine. Everything's No, it's it's solid. I mean, I, we took a little bit more time on that than we should have, but it's fine. It's first first scene, so. Exactly. Next, we moved to our second location, which is actually our apartment. <laughs> a lot of the filming is gonna be taking place here because this is actually acting as our lead character's home, like her apartment in the story. It's definitely convenient and you know budget friendly to do it like this, to use our apartment as a filming location. Um, but I gotta say, definitely pretty chaotic and stressful having 20 people work out of your home for three days. We headed outside to grab some exterior scenes, uh, which is kind of a part of this larger yeah, dating exactly. montage. Yeah, Unfortunately, so. with some pretty bad lighting, <laughs> we were shooting at high noon. One of the things I quickly realized is that scheduling and you know ideal time of day for lighting, uh, a huge headache to try and plan where to shoot and when. Let's do a mix of tracking, but then also a push in while they're walking by. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is great. We then headed to our second dialogue scene with our next actor, Stu, who is playing one of the bad dates. Put it on the boat. I'll put it on the boat, on the boat, because if we can see a bit of wire. Uh, they take a motorcycle ride up to this scenic outlook, sit down, you know, have a 
awkward conversation. Of course, you know, same bad lighting, unfortunately. For this scene, I actually had my first AC Sam operate the camera with an easy rig. The perspective we needed was pretty high, and so the road had a little bit of a slope. He's taller than me, so I had him shoot it. Short king problems. I guess. <laughs> but we're starting to have some fun. I mean, we have perfect weather. The script is honestly pretty funny <laughs> and finally getting to hear it performed like with actors was a, a really cool experience. Yeah, that's a good shot right there. Kind of when the yeah, Stu's leaning forward a little bit. 15 Apple, take three markers. Yeah, it really never gets old. Yeah, I don't think oh, them pulling up right make sense for the cut. Yeah. It's too chronological. It doesn't. Um, so no, it's basically just gonna be motorcycle riding shots. Two or three riding shots. We need to move camera over to the gimbal. What's up? Hey. This is Jason, who was our gaffer for day one. And he was actually subbing in for Oscar, who is our gaffer for the rest of the project, which you guys will get to meet a little bit later. Yeah. All right. So one. here you see we have a camera. Ooh. Sourcing our cast and crew for this was a lot more challenging than I expected. We didn't have unlimited budget. In fact, the way this worked is I basically took all of what Small Rig was willing to pay me for the sponsored video and dumped it into the film and actually put in more money out of my own pocket to make this thing happen. I mean, this was a really special opportunity for me. I wanted to do it right. I wanted to treat it like a spec piece for my portfolio. So I kind of said, screw it. We were lucky to have the entire cast, which are all working actors, donate their time to be a part of this. Most of the entire crew took well below normal rates. My wife, Kylie, was the producer for the entire thing. Uh, also like the production designer, assistant director. And we even had a few amazing people come out as an extra set of hands to shoot BTS, to be PAs. And even with all of that, it's mind blowing just how quickly the budget adds up to do something like this. Um, turns out that feeding 20 people for three days in LA isn't cheap. Lesson number one, I guess. Day one in the books. Day two, we have a plan. We stayed up till trying to figure out a shot list. Yesterday, we didn't didn't hit the shot list as effectively as we could. So now we're actually trying to go for it in a strategic order. So first setup we're gonna try and roll into right now is the top down overhead shot of the bed. And this is a match cut. Essentially what we're trying to do is have Sage or lead actress falling into bed after coming home from a night of clubbing and then waking up a match cut of different position, different daylight in the room. That's 25. That's 25. I think that's great. Oh, that actually looks like it looks really, really good. fucking cool. It looks really good. I just took a screenshot. That was like really sick. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's a nice feeling the cut of the top. Yeah. How long do you think we have this for? That, that cut of light is not coming from the real sun, is it? No, it's not. It's yeah, it's us. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you know, gaffers and stuff, like, making light look nice. I definitely put up heavier cameras on boom arms, so. Yeah. I think it'd be good. This is his job. Now, for filming, I was super happy to be able to bring on a first and second AC to help me in the camera department, opposed to, you know, me as the DP doing all of the camera rigging and building and, you know, pulling focus on my own. This is a huge advantage in film because it allows me to take off some of that weight and those technical decisions and really focus on my role in the image as the DP. Sam and Alexio not only took a well below normal rate for this, but were just amazing team players. Like they were so kind and, you know, kind of helping each other out, doing different roles, you know, trading off, pulling focus. It was amazing to have such a flexible team with me behind the camera. We primarily ran the camera in this configuration, just kind of in this handheld form. We used it on an easy rig, mostly tripod, the new small rig Freeblazer. This is their brand 
brand new video tripod with the super fast one stepped height adjustment for the legs. It has a crazy max height of like 78 inches, a surprisingly smooth pan and tilt head with a drop in quick release, and it can support up to a 22 pound payload. I mean, small rig really did provide us everything we needed to take this very pocketable compact camera. You add on the cage and then you can just start building the heck out of this thing. We of course have it on the 15 millimeter dovetail base plate. This allows us to stick the 15 millimeter rods on there. For pulling focus, because we're using cinema lenses, we have the Magic Fizz wireless follow focus system, uh, which is amazing. I mean, it's just such a simple and effective system. It's got ultra low latency and high torque, able to handle these bulky cinema lenses, no problem. It has a nice little OLED screen, so it's really easy to see your settings. One click lens calibration, a fully modular design, and you can use up to two motors on the same system. So focus and zoom if you wanted to. For power on the back here, we have this mini V-mount plate that's got plenty of power outputs. And of course we have the 155 watt our V-mount batteries. I honestly can't say enough good things about these things. The bi-directional 65 watt USB-C charging is so helpful. Ultra compact and lightweight. I think they're like 30% smaller than a lot of traditional V-mount batteries. Now for filters, we are using four by five cinema filters. We have NDs and we also have some diffusion. This is the new Revo Arcane matte box. This thing's actually fairly beefy. It's got a much nicer kind of more standard feeling tray. My ACs were able to work with this matte box, swap out the filters I needed super efficiently. Alexio, you know, he's worked with some big, big packages and stuff. How are you feeling about this? It's great, honestly. Like it's everything you need and nothing more. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps that we're throwing some very, very, very nice vintage glass on there. Very rare glass. The lenses I chose to use are these incredibly rare Canon rangefinders. These are a rehoused vintage lens by TLS and are probably the most charactered and insane looking spherical lenses I've ever used. Like the most amazing looking flares, crazy soft and artsy focus on like the edges of the frame. I spent a lot of time researching what lenses we wanted to shoot on for the look of this film. I would love to show you guys the shots that we're getting throughout this behind the scenes, but I, I don't want to spoil it. I want you guys to wait to see this whole piece as a complete story yeah something like that feels more like a like it's bouncing off a mirror or something right come yeah. up on nine for you guys so we definitely gotta get going yeah we're ready cool hard light man it's your best friend everybody thinks hard light is like the enemy you're like dude oh we gotta diffuse it yeah we got our little bathroom <laughs> bathroom troll in here <laughs> Okay, what do I do? You're getting in bed. Getting You're getting in. cozy. We're, we're waking up, but we also don't want it to look like too beautiful. It's like, no, yeah. it's match cut after the club, so you're probably a little hungover. Next to this is her coming home from the club. Yeah, so she's, this is, oh my god, dude. Gorgina! Sweet. Uh, don't look this way so much, because I'm going to point this right at you. Yeah. We're going straight in your eyes. It'll look nice, though. Camera speed. Okay, we're at scene five, take one, Margaret. Wait for text notifications, Talia. Good. Look at phone for another sec. Great, I love that leg. And then you're like, huh, this could be interesting. All right. All right, cool. So we are now shifting into nighttime match cut. So we'll need to reset light. You're probably gonna have like a good 15, 20 minutes to breathe, so. Ugh, that was hard, hard work, right? Yeah. How do you, how do you feel about moving into this night scene? I think we'll just keep the same setup as much as possible and we'll adjust levels and change color, color. color temperature. You know, 6,000 on the unit. Yeah. And on your end, you could help make it bluer too. Yeah, I could go down to like 4,500 or so mm -hmm. for white balance. The curtain, I think or, the curtain up will be nice, but mostly so. it's just like, it's just blue fill that's kind of softly coming through. Dope. Like we'll barely see it on the ground here. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, it's really dark. not the end of the world. I mean, that little skip that's happening on the concrete, like... That's that's nice, right? It is it is pretty nice in a weird way. Like, it almost looks yeah. like the moon's reflecting outside of that window. Yeah. I know the motivation is a little weird for this. It's a little funky, but it's like, it, it like, works. Gives you, know you what a I little mean? something over there, you know, like, just visual interest. You know, well, it, it's, right now it's skipping off the side of the bed, yeah. so we'll wanna, like... Yeah, that's not... Play a little bit differently. Yeah. 
what if we put like a like just a small like white mm -hmm. bounce board like right there give it a, like a soft wrap on this side totally rather than a hard, hard streak i'm glad we got through i'm glad that we're not having to like completely strip the setup because i told them like 20 minutes oh i'm not mad at that i like that like half yeah. In post. We yeah. Can. I, I think I, I think as long as like our ratios are accurate and yeah. like believable, then I, we're great. Yeah, I think this feels pretty good. We just come in and just like. All right, gang. Camera speeds. Scene four, take one marker. That's fine. We can just quickly reset. And then we're gonna reset this room for nighttime, but with ambient bulbs. Okay. So five A for this next scene. Cool. We're going handheld for like two minutes and then we're out. The 50 is like obnoxiously good. I thought, and it's so funny, when I first heard about that lens and everybody calling it the dream lens, I was just like, like, that sounds so like pretentious. Yeah, I tried to buy one a few, few months ago, but. What is, one of the, what is one of these, like 20? It depends, it depends on the condition 20? because. Yeah. For, for the dream lens? Yeah, the, the value of the set, the four lenses that we have, uh, 90,000. Here. Thank you, got it. Yeah, Brett, if you just wanna give me a few few kind of like actions here. Now, it may seem obvious to some, but in narrative filmmaking, it's not always practical to be able to shoot the story in order of how it occurs. You may only have actors or locations available for very specific times. For instance, we're shooting like four different scenes here in the bedroom that take place at completely different times in the story, at different times of day or days. So setting and resetting the room and lighting for each of the scenes was fun, but definitely a challenge. It's kind of funny because it's like, this is my home. So feeling inspired and having good ideas was sometimes a little bit difficult for me. So being open to input and collaboration from everybody was a really fun time. We really got to work together to make the best looking image. Over here a little bit. Beautiful. Yeah, so good. I'm like, you're about to kill this <laughs> Throw it on the headboard, yeah. like on the you'll, you'll start, but yeah, you're almost throwing it up. <laughs> oh, the headboard moving too. She's also got the best view too. <laughs> Not the Where's BTS? <laughs> got, got oh, we got BTS. Scene nine, take one marker. Cut. Two. Oh, so are we gonna? Unfortunately, for sound, are we gonna need to get some some sound from Deshaun? <laughs> I think so. Right. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. Like we did for the table read, we can make this just feel just a dim scene. This will probably be. 35, I mean, we might even play on the 25. The whole part, the, like a lot of these bad dates are, we want them to feel the opposite of isolated, like just kind of like wide in the middle okay. of the frame. Like it's awkward, there's no real intimacy building yet. Okay. Yeah, we can do eight by, we have an eight by solid and eight by ultra, so we can- This scene here was together. especially challenging because we needed a dimly lit cocktail bar type of vibe, but didn't have access to one. So we ended up improvising a bit and uh, blacking out part of this space inside of our apartment community lounge. My wife did an amazing job with the set design for not only our home space, but also basically each of the locations we filmed in. For this particular setup, we used like fake cocktail menus. We had table linens, wine glasses, and you know, with cranberry juice. And it ended up working out like really well, but this setup did take a serious amount of effort and time on the grip team to kind of black out this whole thing. But you know, we had to do what we needed for the shot. I don't know that one. Thank you so much. If there's one thing that I feel like we could have had more time or planning or, or money to put toward, it would have been production design, like the props, like the things that actually show up in the shot, like wardrobe, tablecloths, stuff like that. You can have the best camera, the best lenses, you know, all the lights you could get your hands on. But if what is actually showing in the frame, like what the actors are wearing, what's sitting on the table, doesn't look like it belongs in the story. It's just an immediate little piece that will pull the viewer out of that story and out of that scene and be like, yeah, well, they didn't have budget for that. Bathroom boy, back at it.
we really did have to improvise a lot and dress certain locations to look different. For instance, we have a club scene in the story where Talia and her best friend go out for a night of clubbing and drinks, and obviously it's not exactly practical to get a film crew into a club in LA, so we actually ended up creating like a fake little dance floor scene, just like a black box with some crazy RGB lights, and the goal was just to get some supplementary kind of details, close up macro shots that could cut in with some footage that we're planning on going to get at an actual club, very low key and discreet at some point here soon. How do you feel like it's going so far? I think we're in a really good place. Like overall crew is being amazingly accommodating. Everybody's creatively collaborating, which is like probably my favorite part about doing projects like this. We try and make it really clear and it's a really good thing to do. It's just kind of like level set and tell everybody like, yo, if you have like ideas and thoughts, say it. Like there's no right or wrong answer with any solution, any setup that we're trying to do. And sometimes the best ideas come like the most unexpectedly. But we're quickly realizing that sometimes that flexibility leads to getting behind with schedule. <laughs> So we're, we're definitely a little bit behind, but we're getting really, really good stuff regardless. And so I think with a little bit more discipline in certain moments, I think we can, we can do good today. Mm -hmm. So we're close. What are you guys One. doing right now? So right now we're getting our exposure set in camera. We have 1.8 or 1.2. So that's four stops of ND. So that's like bringing, in essence, bringing the ISO down of the camera, but we're doing that with our filters so we can open our lens wide up in the aperture, get that really soft depth of field. We're on to our third and final day of shooting. Honestly, energy is a little bit low from some of us. We're still ambitious and excited to get this thing wrapped, but being behind schedule definitely throws off the morale at certain times. I mean, we've been doing back to back 14, 15, 16 hour days with like only a few hours of sleep for the last two nights. But the fresh energy from some of our actors coming in for these scenes today really did bring up the mood. You guys feeling good on camera side? Really? Okay. Hey, great first scene, guys. Everybody worked together really, really well. So yeah, our frame is like, maybe like waist level. Like we're, we're looking up a little bit. We want you guys to feel like slightly heroed because like this is her bringing you back to like the spot. You know what I mean? Like she's proud of like who she is, like what she's doing. Obviously she's got a nice apartment. So we'll go like a little bit tilted up. One of the most critical and probably amateur mistakes that we made was not having enough planning and like detailed understanding of the scene blocking and our, our shot list. How are our characters physically physically moving throughout the space in a certain scene. You know, how much coverage do we need? Like what's necessary to the story? We definitely misused a lot of time working out these details like, in the moment, like during each shot. But again, this was a learning experience for just about all of us. Hey, uh, back light back there. Down the just hall. to kick down the hall just so it's not down. that hall light. Yeah, Perfect. just so a they get streak. a little rim yeah, as they walk little... in. Love it. And then when we're here, we're here, we, we can, can push that in further. And yeah, diff totally. Diff it and have a, just have it be like a stopover. So good. Bench. On that diffusion mm -hmm. over on that side or flag at the top, just because we're getting like spill yeah. across the ceiling. Yeah, 100p. Is there? It is possible. Oh, yeah. Good. I do want it warm light. I do want it to feel like it's tungsten interior lighting. So I'll probably split it like 4,200. So when we arrive here at the at the stop, the beat for a moment, just make sure you're a little more open so I can see him. Cause you stopped and he was kind of just behind you. Yeah, you need to be looking this way. And Brett, you need to be kind of around her, like almost line yourself up with the fridge. With the fridge? Yeah, you're kind of coming in and you're like, even further. Yeah, like right there. That's great. So we're using element filters, really great. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop it in here. Yeah. Let's do. Let's do it for you. Oh, you want to shoot that today? Like right now? No, no, no. Just the dialogue. Oh. Boom. Is is there a world in which we can thread that topper over the top? Totally. Topper over the top. You know. You feel? Oh yeah. Sloppy toppy. <laughs> Oh my God. Sorry, too much. Brett, our director, was playing another one of the bad dates, 
And so it was funny. It was his first time acting. Uh, we had a lot of fun, you know, trying to get the right performance from him, especially up against all of these other really well-trained actors. That helps a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think this can be a, a, a thirty-five right here, and yeah, we're getting we'll get this in the foreground. Do we want to have her like stutter and then walk further in and stop? I think she just got out of the shower, and she's like, "What's going on?" And once again, we're quickly resetting the room for a different scene at a completely different time of day. We're going for a kind of like midday afternoon. Sun's starting to go down. I wouldn't call it golden hour, but maybe it's like a 4 p.m. Sun's kind of that direction. It's sunny out. We can clearly tell that it, maybe it's nice weather, but she's in a depressive episode. She's not outside. Table is a disaster. It's got a good feel. So that guy's at 100% right now? The R720. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel fine about the output level. Of at that. this point, so. things are kind of starting to feel like a bit of a blur for some of us, but uh, we're finally heading to our last location of the day, this restaurant called Terra's Mexican Grill in Studio City. Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Oh, Martin. Okay, Martin. Here. It's, yeah, it's really not bad. We have two more bad date scenes to capture, and these actors were incredibly fun to work with. Our setup for this shot was up against these extremely bright backlit windows. We ended up using the 1200D firing at like nearly 100% into this 4x4 bounce just over top of the actor's like far side camera. You don't like what? Uh, I was just gonna say, I don't love that palm being like right on frame left. Scene seven, take two, mark. Yeah. And you guys feel free to like improv a little bit yeah. in the beginning, you know what yeah. I mean? Let's yeah. drag it out a little bit. <clears throat> You're just so different than I imagined. <laughs> you know. <laughs> when we moved in for our close-up shots, the singles of each actor, we took down that overhead key and made a 4x4 book light just off of frame right. With how much light we were using, once I turned away from the camera and like looked back at everybody, like I literally couldn't see, like it was just so bright. But like your hand motions when it's down here and stuff, and when you grab the glass, all looks amazing. So right now I... <laughs> Finally, we transitioned into our last shot for this day, which was meant to be like an Italian restaurant vibe, but we're shooting in the same space, which is clearly a Mexican restaurant. So we did our best to dress the set and look as close to Italian as possible. Overall, I think the looks we came up with for these final two scenes were probably some of my favorite shots. Perfect for what the story oh, needed. Face, ah, it's crazy because I know her. She's like a little girl. Mm. You work out? You know, I like my woman well put together. Cut. Spectacular. Spectacular. Wow. Can, we, can we run one minute? Yeah. Pizza yeah. Mona. And that is a wrap. Yeah. Oh, guys. Good job. Wow. Soon, we'll be heading into post-production for this whole thing. Uh, I'm super stoked. We've got an amazing colorist on board, Jake Pirelli, and I'll actually be editing this thing myself. So I'm planning on doing a, another video breaking down the pre-production, but also the post-production, the editing, the color, the sound. But there you go. That's a behind the scenes look at our three-day production of the short film, Carousel. I haven't said the name this entire time. That's what it's called. It's called Carousel. You guys will see it soon.